This is like a revelation that seems like right in front of our eyes. So there's been a quest to create a machine that could perpetually move, a perpetual motion machine, yeah. which doesn't require additional energy yeah. to, to add it. So you start yeah. the momentum, and then once you start the momentum, it goes infinitely, right? Yeah. Like that's been a, a scientific like study. But it's happening all the time with every single atom. Exactly. It's in perpetual motion exactly. without the adding of additional energy. The only thing that could possibly explain it is there's a source of infinite energy at the root of all of it. And we found it. <laughs> and then it was ignored. It's a hundred some years later. So that guy is not a physicist, Nassim Haramin. He is a self-taught, what we would you know, euphemistically call a crank because he believes a lot of nonsense. None of it's taken seriously by the actual physicists who know what they're talking about, but he's made his career talking physics gobbledygook to people who don't understand physics and making it sound impressive. Uh, he really, you look him up on the internet, there's lots of extensive debunking of all the nonsense that he says he believes. He sells this crystal healing thing for $1,200 that's supposed to work by you know, again, these weird physical things that he says. But right here, just the notion of an atom is a perpetual motion machine. Let's think about this for a second. Um, so first of all, perpetual machi motion machines don't work because it's hard to develop a system that doesn't have any energy loss, right? If it's making noise, it's losing energy, right? Sound is basically energy waves being carried away, propagated away from the system. Any friction, any heat, anything like that in the system will cause it to slowly wind down. But more importantly, you can't get in energy out of a system. If you take energy out of a system, then by definition, you know, it, it's going to wind down, right? So even if you had, even if you were able to make a frictionless system that was in perpetual motion, the moment you take energy out of it, then it slows down, right? Um, unless there is a new source of energy coming in. Uh, the Earth going around the sun, been doing it for four plus billion years. That's because there's no friction or very, very little friction in space. There's no, it's a vacuum, right? So it, things in motion will stay in motion unless a force acts upon them. So it's no surprise that in, you know, frictionless environments in space or in an atom, you know, there's nothing to slow down the electron. That, that metaphor doesn't even really hold you know, it's kind of a simplistic metaphor for what's happening in an atom anyway. But the bottom line is atoms, you know, electrons in the shells around their nucleus, that's a stable situation. And again, depending on uh, the atom. Uh, and there's no reason to expect that like a physical machine that's clanking and cranking away that it would wind down in some way. If you took energy out of it, which we, we can do that, the electrons lose the amount of energy that you take out of them and they go down to a smaller orbit or a lower energy orbit or whatever. If you put energy in them, there's more energy in the system. There is absolutely no reason to think that an atom requires infinite energy to keep going. That's not how physics, that's not how quantum mechanics works. That's utter, complete gibberish, which again is Nassim's stock and trade. That's what this guy talks. So, you know, I'm not saying that somebody who isn't, who's a self-taught scientist can't be correct or make meaningful contributions, but it's a huge red flag. Science is hard. There's a, you know, it it's very difficult to even understand what the cutting edge of any science is, is doing and, and, and understand what they're, you know, what they're saying, let alone to contribute to it, let alone to say that you've disproven all of it wrong or whatever, you're smarter than every pre actually trained physicist in the world. Uh, that is the realm of cranks and charlatans, right? Those kind of claims. And of course, he's selling a bunch of nonsense. He makes a bunch of weird claims. And what he's saying, you know, what, what physicists hear what he's saying, they hear techno babble gibberish, not anything meaningful. Uh, but it's not meant to convince physicists, because if he was trying to convince physicists that he has contributed some understanding to our knowledge of how the universe works, you know, he would be publishing papers in respectable journals. What he's doing, rather, 
to to sort of bolster his you know his persona is he publishes papers in fake journals, in throwaway journals, journals that no physicist has ever heard of, that are pay to play, that don't have any standards, right? He's not publishing in real scientific journals, in respected journals. Like, why is that? Because he probably, because he can't. Why? Because what he's saying is absolute nonsense and gibberish, and he doesn't actually understand quantum mechanics and physics. He just knows the jargon enough to fake his way to, with non-experts. Uh, and this sort of idea that atoms somehow are evidence that there's infinite energy available is utter demonstrable nonsense. Not even consistent with even a basic understanding of, of modern physics. So don't believe any of it.